Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob, the Science Guy. You know, one of the biggest challenges that we have with dealing with the flat earth is their misuse of scientific method in the scientific literature. The primary offender in this is one quantum eraser. So today we're going to have a look at an example of quantum eraser and his use of both scientific method and scientific literature. So join me today as we review Ballbusters Gravity. Okay, for this episode of Ballbusters, Quantum Eraser just literally typed gravity is not a force into a Google search engine and read off the results, or some of them, as we shall see. Gravity is not a force. Let's just pound this in for you, okay? From Caltech, Einstein came up with the theory of general relativity in 1915, the prototype of all modern gravitational theories. Its crucial ingredient involving a colossal intellectual jump is the concept of gravitation not as a force, but as a manifestation of the curvature of space-time. So let's go ahead and see how I'm going to do this. First of all, even though Quantum Eraser didn't provide links, and rather than put the website up, actually just type them on WordPress or whatever he's got there. I went down and actually searched out and found each of these links. So, for example, here is his quote from Caltech, and there is the web address for the document, and that'll be in the descriptions. And the top part right there is clearly the quote that he just read. However, what he didn't read was the quote right underneath it from the same paper. Despite the great contrast between general relativity and Newtonian theory, predictions of the former approach the latter in systems whose velocities are small compared to the speed of light and gravitational potentials are weak enough that they cannot cause larger velocities. This is why we can discuss with Newtonian theory the structure of the Earth, the planet, the stars, and stellar clusters, and the gross features of motions in the solar system without fear of error. So even though Einstein is the current thought on this, this article makes it very clear that Newtonian theory and Newtonian gravity approximate Einstein to such a great extent that we can use them without fear of error. I think you will agree that this is a rather key omission when it comes to the meaning of the paper the quantum eraser is quoting. But let's proceed. Brian Cox, there isn't really a force of gravity at all. Now this is a very interesting concept that he's bringing up, and that is this general theory of relativity. Objects moving along together along the same line of space-time are not moving relative to each other, and quite frankly don't know if they are falling or simply floating. We'll have more on that later. George Booser, 2019, See Fat to Fat Earth. Gravity is not a force, but you can think of it as a force. It should be quite apparent by now that Quantum Eraser is, shall we say, a rather disagreeable fellow. Uh, clearly, his tone and manner of presentation is quite different than mine. And please notice that he's making personal attacks against Fight the Flat Earth, uh, mocking his weight, rather than actually a attacking his evidence. But since the George Muser interview and the quote seems to be a point of contention in Flat Earth, let's go ahead and listen to it from the man himself. Here is the portion of the Fight the Flat Earth interview with George Muser. And he really fell to Einstein. Einstein's role here was to really fill in that mechanism. He explained how is it that objects, massive objects, exert what seems to be a force on one another. Now, literally, it's not a force. So the thing about Newton's laws, you can't take it literally. But Newton himself didn't. That's what's, that's what's, or Newton had various ideas on this. But generally, it's thought that Newton did not take his own law that literally that there is a force reaching from one object out to another. However, you can act as if there were one, and it's perfectly valid for 
the applications of Newton's laws to act as though this, this force is operating. So you can still use Newton's laws to calculate gravity as a force? Absolutely. And it, it, it works to a high degree of approximation. There are circumstances under which it begins to uh, reveal that it's merely an approximation, but it's a high accuracy approximation that is used routinely. The, the snapping of the wand that I was referring to was the specific idea that the force is non-local. In other words, that Earth reaches out as though by magic yeah. to to hold on to the moon. Like Einstein came along and he said, and, and, and again, he's, he's following in Newton's own footsteps. Einstein came along and said, what could cause this force or this apparent force, or this, this action that gravity exerts? And he developed this whole theory of of space time and, and its distortions and how masses distort space time, which in turn exerts what we, we perceive as, as the effects of, of gravity, filling in a mechanism that had not been there. And it's a similar thing with, with, with uh, Newtonian gravity. We can, we can and do and we must think of, of Newtonian gravity as, as a force. That doesn't mean it really is, but we're not, we don't necessarily need to work at the really is level in this case. We yeah. can still think of it as a force for understanding projectile motion, when you throw a baseball, when you or calculate the orbit of the moon or a satellite. It, it works extremely well. And it's only really the, the fundamental physicist who's trying to understand the causes of things that really begins to question that picture. Okay, let's see if we can bring this into a little sharper focus. There are two aspects of gravity. One is what it does, and the other is why it does it. Newton answered the questions about what it does. Einstein furthered that work, building upon Newton, by coming up with a reason as to why it happens. So, in day-to-day -day life, as long as we are not dealing with very, very massive objects, or objects that are close to the speed of light, or very tiny objects, basically everything that we can see and touch, responds to Newtonian gravity, which acts like a force on those objects. Now, this is the same thing that was said in the previous papers. Let's see if quantum erasers quote mining yields further uh, clarification of this. So, we'll proceed. From the universe today, in general relativity, gravity is not a force. Now, this paper is actually very good, and I would suggest people go ahead and pull this link up and read it. Uh, it's uh, presented in a magazine style, and it's very readable, even for non-scientists. What they're talking about here is that basically, if you look at lines of space-time near a mass, such as near the Earth, objects that are on the same line of space-time will behave the same way and will not move relative to each other. That's why objects fall at the same rate, the same distance from Earth. Now, more importantly is this next quote, and let's go ahead and go over that very specifically. Now, here's the important thing. I'm going to play Quantum Eraser's quote one more time from this article, and then I'm going to show the actual words of the article that he is supposedly quoting, and you will see that he leaves out a key word. From the universe today, in general relativity, gravity is not a force. Now, as you can see from the article, he left out the word just. It says that gravity is not just a force. I'm going to let you contemplate the difference between those two statements while we finish up this video. From the University of California, strictly speaking, gravity is not a force. Now, once again, when you look at the full text of the article, it again says that in most situations, the differences between Einsteinian and Newtonian gravity cancel out, and you can easily use Newtonian gravity in all its glory. 
So basically, what this is saying is that we don't do field equations to build bridges. What they are doing is trying to split frog hairs to say that Einstein has totally replaced Newton and Newton no longer is valid. Nothing could be further from the truth. And every one of Quantum Eraser's papers so far have stated that. Let's go see if he's got some more evidence for us. From physics.org, according to this theory, gravity is not a force. You know, and once again, here is the actual article. There's the quote. And two paragraphs down, it says, and I quote, for most applications, though, gravity is best explained by Newton's law of universal gravitation. So, again, Newton is not superseded. Newton is perfectly valid. And in most cases, in the world that we can see and touch, Newtonian gravity works just fine and very closely approximates Einstein. Now, I think it's important to take a moment to see the reaction of the ball buster panel led by Nathan Oakley after Quantum Eraser did his presentation. I think it's very enlightening. And then I'll sum up. Comments, questions? Hola. That earlier statement about snapping the wand and, and getting away from an invisible force at a distance. Well, is space time visible? You know, if, that, if that's the antidote to an invisible mysterious force, then show me space time because I can't see it. You understand that there's a difference between just saying it's an unknown instantaneous action at a distance versus being able to describe what it is and use that description to make predictions that in turn come true. You realize there's a difference, right? 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 See it. Uh, FYI, space-time is conceptual. And guess what we're going to hear tomorrow? The force of gravity. You want to read it, if you may? Yes. So although Earth appears to be pulled towards the sun by gravity, there is no such force. So that was probably the only exception, but that, that actually had the presupposition that we are falling around the light in the sky. Yeah, it's the only one that made any connection uh, to anything outside of it, yes. I just wanted to make that clear to anybody who may hang on to that particular part of it, that that is entirely based on a presupposition that Earth is a sphere and the sky is a vacuum and that we are falling, that is the presuppositional sphere Earth, is falling around the light that we see traversing above our head. Oh, dear God. Newtonian gravity and Einstein gravity are mutually exclusive. Number well, no, Quantum Eraser, although Einstein is probably closer to the truth. Newtonian gravity approximates it in most situations, and every one of your references agreed with that statement. And Number set. two, Newtonian gravity is a force. Einsteinian gravity is not a force. This is probably the first statement that's even come close to being accurate in this entire presentation, Quantum Eraser. And as George Muser very clearly pointed out, Einsteinian gravity, while it is not a force, manifests itself as a force and can be treated as a force. force. Number three, Newtonian, the law of superposition applies. Einsteinian, the law of superposition doesn't apply. Now, this is when things start getting fun. I actually had no idea what the law of superposition was, so I looked it up, and here it is. This is the first reference I got. It had to do with the strata of rock and the idea that the deeper the rock layer, the older it was. Now, clearly, I could just run with this, but we all know that that would be an evocation fallacy where I'm using one definition of a word other than the definition that was being used by the presenter. But Bob the Science Guy don't roll like that. So I tried to find one that would be appropriate to what he was talking about. And here it is. Now again, the link to this is in the description, so you can read it yourself. But needless to say, I started reading it, and guess what I found a little bit further down? And there it is, right in the paper he quoted. When gravitational fields are weak and speeds are far from light speed, General relativity reduces to Newtonian gravity. Pays to read the whole paper, man. The attribution or cause of this effect has not been identified 
isolated. That is scientifically validated. So every time you say gravity, whether you like it or not, as soon as you say or post gravity, you immediately invoke a cause, either mass attracting mass or space time, right? So you need a new word. I got one ducal slopelgertz. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and finish this up. Now, tomorrow, when Quantum Eraser flies back to his little pigeon flock after his chess game with me, he's going to say that Bob the Science Guy said Quantum Eraser didn't stretch to the truth. Now, in reality, what I'm saying is that Quantum Eraser didn't just stretch the truth, he misrepresented the truth. Now, if I could give one bit of advice to Quantum Eraser and his like in the Flat Earth community, if you're going to attempt to cite scientific references, it behooves you to read them. Because then somebody will not look at the very next line or the next paragraph, which totally contradicts what you claim that reference says, and point it out for everybody. So, this is Bob the Science Guy, signing out from Northern Michigan. Hey guys, take a moment, hit that little like and subscribe button down there. These videos are getting thousands of views and hundreds of likes. Let's see if we can bring those numbers a little closer to the number of views. All right? We'll see you again soon.